Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. This is a viewer requested video that we're making today on the 85 grain extreme cavitator from Lehigh. It's loaded by Underwood. This is a screaming little 30 carbine. The M1 carbine is a classic rifle. There's a bunch of them out there. And this little uh, cartridge has been a little bit of an underdog uh, throughout all the years and everything, but that's gonna change a little bit with this 85 grain screamer. We're gonna have a look at it today in detail and we're gonna have a little fun with a 30 carbine. One of my favorite guns. Let's do it. Oh yeah, let's get after it. So guys, the M1 carbine is a timeless rifle and the 30 carbine is a really cool cartridge. It's been around a good while and it's been proven, but uh, Lehigh's definitely giving it a shot in the arm and Underwood is loading this thing to some really cool uh, crazy speeds. We got an 85 grainer moving pretty good out of the M1 carbine here. There's some other guns in 30 carbine too. The AMT hardballers are out there. Ruger has a, a Blackhawk revolver single action in a 30 carbine. There's probably a couple of others out there that I'm not mentioning, but what we're going to do is we're going to shoot a control here. And we've got four layers of denim and two 10% FBI blocks. We've got some uh, early 1970s production M1 carbine ammo. This is Lake City, 110 grain. The 85 and the 110 are moving pretty similar velocities. Uh, so we're going to give it a try. And then we're going to run some of the Underwood here. This is going to be fun. So this is just a control to show you what you can expect from ball ammo and the typical FBI uh, test here. So here we go. All right, we're going to survey the damage, flip our uh, blocks around, whatever we need to do, and then we're going to try the 85 uh, grain extreme cavitator. All right, so our first ballistics gel shot teaches us a couple of things. One thing, the 110 grain 30 cal ball round for the M1 carbine is no joke. You can see why it was an effective military cartridge. You got to give credit where it's due. Uh, you got some pretty decent permanent cavitation. Uh, the max, the initial cavity being around an inch, inch and a half. And then as that bullet started to yaw and tumble in the gelatin, which bullets start to do some really weird things when they go in gelatin, they'll tend to, to tumble and things like that. As that tumbling occurred, yes, you're going to get some pretty nasty cavitation going on there. And you got complete pass through all the way through 32 inches of ballistic gelatin. You can clearly see that the bullet starts to yaw and it actually exited out the left side of the block. So bullets tend to do some weird things. It's just a little round nose. It served the military well. But I'll tell you what, let's perform the same test. We're going to use the 85 grain cavitator and we want to know exactly what we have to, to look at here in terms of the two compared to each other. So let's shoot that now. All right, so we're going to run the same exact test with two uh, gel blocks, four layers of denim, except this time we're going to use the 85 grain Underwood Extreme Cavitator. Really wicked little rounds moving about 2052 out of this M1 carbine. Uh, over the military ammo, about 125 feet per second more velocity, so definitely moving a little bit hotter. That makes sense. It's a little bit lighter bullet than the 110 service load. So we're going to try it out and see how it does. Same test. Oh, that looked diabolical. Let's go have a look. All right, well, you can definitely color me impressed on that. That is pretty dang awesome. The extreme cavitator going through, and the minute that it came in this block, just causing extreme amounts of permanent cavities to form in this block. And it, we got about 24 inches of total penetration. The round came to a stop about halfway through the second block. Nice straight line penetration. The bullet did turn around, uh, but that's to be expected. But you can see, you know, that cavitation is just insane. I mean, you can see in the slow-mo shot that the, the temporary cavity is insane, the way this block just blows up from that just shock of that hydraulic effect of those cuts of that bullet, really calling those fluid dynamics to just get on and cause some really crazy things to happen. And you got to remember, that is a permanent cavity. So the temporal cavity and the permanent cavity are two different things. You wouldn't want to get shot with the 110 ball ammo, but you wouldn't want to get shot with this, definitely, by any stretch of the imagination. There's lots of surplus M1s out there. There's companies that are making reproduction M1 carbines in 30 cal. Uh, it's a great little round. I mean, a lot of folks have killed deer with this cartridge uh, over the years and everything. It's a nice lightweight little gun, something that's easy to hang out with and walk around with, good little walking gun. Uh, I tell you what, we're gonna just pick this out of here with the forceps just for fun. All right, so there's our bullet. Retained all of its uh, weight, all of its shape, 
you could just about just take this bullet if you wanted to and just reload it and shoot it again. I mean, it did not deform at all. So that's pretty cool. And we also saw that through the entire initial 16 inch block, you've got a cavity going through the entire block into the second block. There's even a little bit of cavitation in the second block. So you're talking a total of about 21 inches of cavitation with the, with the penetration ended up being about four inches after that with very little cavitation after that. So pretty cool. That's an awesome uh, result. Very fun. Tell you what, we're going to go away from the gel now that we have a little bit of a baseline. Let's break out some pork shoulders, have a little bit of fun with that. All right, we're going to shoot the ball around again, but this time we're going to slap a big piece of ham here with a couple of watermelons backing it up. What I'm looking for here is I want the slow-mo to tell me kind of what kind of energy transfer we're getting, like what's getting moved around, what's, what's going nuts here. And granted, we're kind of relatively close range, but this should just give you an idea. All right, so here's a 110 grain ball, and then we'll shoot the same test again with the cavitator. Here we go. So that went all the way through the ham, all the way through the watermelons, and then I heard it hit a plate back there behind, and it, it sounded like it hit that plate with a pretty good bit of authority. So uh, that's interesting. Let's have a look at the damage. All right, guys, well, there's really no surprise there. 110 grain ball was no slouch. You have to call it what it is. That's some pretty impressive penetration. A lot of people think that an M1 carbine ain't gonna penetrate anything, it's not gonna hurt anything. Believe me, at combat ranges, you know, 50, 60, out to 100 yards, the M1 carbine was a really, really deadly contender. If you understand its limitations and what the cartridge is designed to do, it'll certainly do it. But let's do this exact same test again, but this time, let's run the cavitator, we'll compare the shots, and see if we got some uh, gratuitous uh, nasty going on here. Let's do it. All right, guys, same test with the 85 grain Underwood Extreme Cavitator. Let's go for it. What we're looking for here, I wanna see if we get a little bit more gratuitous stuff going on. Here we go. Well, I'm no expert or anything like that, but uh, when you're wearing your enemy too, it's probably a good sign that you did something to him. Let's go have a look. All right, we got some pretty visceral results there on old Wilbur. Uh, we saw that the round went in and uh, it, it opened up pretty good. I mean, we were wearing pieces of that pig way back there in terms of just the chunks that are blown out. And you can see, I hit the, the, each of the hams in exactly the same spot. The ball round, while impressive, it just didn't have the wow factor that this cavitator did because you saw it opened up the top here and, and just really punched through and just caused all kinds of nasty damage. Maybe not super scientific, but cool to watch. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna visit an old myth. We're gonna do a little bit of myth busting in this video while we're testing out this ammo and having some fun with the 30 carbine. There's kind of an old myth out there. You know, some of the old vets say, oh, well, uh, you know, a, a 30 carbine won't punch through wool coat, the enemy's wool coat. Some, some of the troops might've complained, oh, well, at longer ranges, you know, this thing's just not gonna punch through. Well, we're not gonna do it longer range, but I'll tell you what, we're gonna step it up and we're gonna get some like obscene amount of layers of wool coat that we're gonna cut up and let's shoot some gel blocks and have some fun with this cavitator. I think we can see here what the ball was capable of doing. We're gonna go straight to the cavitator and just get down to business. Let's do it. Okay, here's the scenario. You're sitting minding your own business and the enemy comes over the hill and he's wearing 10 wool coats. He heard about this whole wool armor thing and he doesn't know what to think. So he's like, you know what? If I wear 10 wool coats, he can't kill me. So this is simulating a guy wearing 10 wool coats. This is 10 layers of wool coat and two FBI uh, ballistic shell blocks. I don't think this has ever been done. So we're just gonna do it. This is 110 grain military ball and uh, 10 wool coats, nothing but net. Something moved, let's go have a look. All right, guys, I think we can say that at personal defense ranges, the M1 carbine is no slouch. And you gotta remember that the little carbine was intended to kind of bridge the gap between the M1 Garand and the 1911 pistol. So it's one of those deals where they wanted something that had a little bit more firepower and reach than a 1911, but for a troop that they couldn't just issue a Garand to, maybe he was doing another job or something like that. So as a personal defense weapon, you could just about call the M1 carbine really like the first PDW in a way. Uh, and it was really one of the first like military produce, you know, specific uh, task uh, driven guns. So that was really cool. Uh, we went through 10 layers of wool uh, right there. We got some pretty nasty cavitation. I mean, that ball round, 
uh, we know that it's proven and it's, it's been around. The ball round definitely caused some damage and went pretty much all the way through the ballistic skeleton. So that's some pretty nas nasty penetration there. Pretty good looking cavity. Let's pit the uh, cavitator against it. Same test and we'll move on. Let's do it. This video is turning out to be a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying myself here. All right, 85 grain extreme cavitator. Same test. A maniac coming out of the woodwork wearing Tim wool coats. Here we go. That looked pretty, uh, pretty nasty. Let's have a look. All right, after reviewing the slow-mo on that first shot, it looks like the, the ball round actually went all the way through both gelatin blocks, but it didn't. It exited kind of out the side of the block about right here. So for what that's worth, there that is. We got 21 inches of penetration out of the extreme cavitator, punched through all the wool coats. And it looks like the, uh, the exit hole out of the wool is a lot more visceral and scary looking and also carried a lot more debris and wool into the wound than the ball round did. You know, those flutes that are cut on the nose of the bullet really kind of almost cut as they go through. And the way that that bullet works is really cool because the, those air pockets kind of displace and just really cause some nasty fluid dynamics to, to start happening here. So you got a really nasty permanent cavity, which is really not that much different than the ball round, but the permanent cavity is longer than the ball round afforded. And the temporal cavity is definitely a lot crazier looking and everything like that. So we caught the, caught the round here. All right. And again, no deformation. 100% weight retention. You could literally just take that and reload it and use it again if you wanted to. Let's come up with some other crazy things to do. Keep at it. This is fun. All right, now that we can see just how effective this extreme cavitator is in 85 grain from Underwood here, we're going to put it through a little bit of a hunting scenario. So we got 10% gel blocks that we've put some slices in and we've actually added Sinbone, which is a, a laboratory grade synthetic bone medium. I know we're getting really nerdy here, but what we want to replicate we're looking at like a, we're trying to replicate a pass through shot through an animal, you know, getting in one side through the rib cage, maybe, you know, through its body and out the other side. We're trying to see if we can get like a full pass through type shot uh, with this particular round. So we're just going to step right on up to the uh, extreme cavitator and uh, this is going to be fun. I've never done this, but uh, this is synthetic bone. So this is going to be pretty, pretty close to a, uh, a simulated kill here. Ready? All right, well, I saw something fly out. Let's have a look. All right, there's some observations here about this round that I want to share. I'm really impressed with it, but don't trust me. I mean, we're going to look at what's going on here. So that extreme cavitator, the minute that it begins to enter this gelatin, we see that we've already got a uh, permanent cavity that's pretty dang impressive. So definitely getting some stuff moving around, everything like that. And it pushed through, knocked this out of the way, it broke the bone. So it didn't just penetrate the bone medium. It actually cracked and broke it. And in the slow-mo, you can see it just whipping around and flying out of there. So that's a, a ridiculous amount of power that's being uh, transferred into the bone medium. Of course, going through, causing a really, really nasty cavity, drawing bone into the wound, which is something we've seen all the time. I've dressed deer out before and I've seen bits of bone from ribcage shots. Uh, so that's pretty consistent with what I've seen um, in a deer hunting situation. Passing through the ballistic gel block, we've got a very nasty uh, temporary cavity that was in the, in the gel shot that we saw in the slow-mo. And then the permanent cavity, of course, is wicked. Bone on the other side, a little bit more of a clean pass through, okay? Not too bad, it didn't really like split it up and, and make it all nasty, but on the exit side of the bone, you can see the way it peels out like that. That's from those, those kind of flutes in that bullet upsetting that bone and pushing it out of the way. All right, went through the rest of the gel block and it stopped on the other side in about 20 and a half inches of penetration. So for hunting purposes, you know, white-tailed deer or hogs or coyotes or anything like that, you know, I could see where this would be a good bullet for a type of situation where maybe you got a, a small, a younger, a younger child that's maybe not quite so big on the upper body strength, needs a light rifle to carry around in the woods if they're a good shot with iron sights, or maybe you got a little wife that weighs 100 pounds and you know, big old deer rifle is gonna kick her all over the place. This is something that's got light recoil, but it still is going to offer a humane kill uh, for a, a potential game animal or whatever you're going to you know, shoot at there. So that's a really, really interesting result. I'm a little surprised, but on the other hand, I'm not because we know 30 carbine is a good contender. 
There's been a lot of deer killed with 30 carbine over the years. Just because there's so many M1 uh, rifles out there, uh, you know, obviously people are going to hunt with them. So let's set up a couple of things, have a little bit of fun. We're going to close this video out and shoot some more stuff. Let's do it. All right, guys, we've been having a really good time with the little extreme cavitator and the 85 grain from Underwood. Uh, this bullet, oddly enough, they also load it in a little 32 ACP. So kind of stretching the legs on some of these classic cartridges with some good bullet designs. That's kind of the vein of what we were trying to accomplish in this video and kind of show you guys some of the more modern loads you got for some of the classics. We're going to take out a variety of targets here. I've got a little thing of shaving cream, which will be fun. Uh, we got some syrup, a big old thing of uh, Aunt Jemima uh, pancake syrup, and we got a coconut. I've never shot one of those, so we're going to see what we got going on there. All right, let's do it. Here we go. All right. All righty. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. We had a lot of fun making it. 30 carbine is one of my favorite little cartridges. It's always been kind of a little bit of a redheaded stepchild in the way of uh, military cartridges. Some people love it, some people hate it. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this look at this particular loading. Uh, we've done some ammunition specific tests in the past. Let me know if you like this kind of thing or if you want us to test some of the other random offerings that are out there. Um, always a lot of fun when you go out here and make a big mess with these guns. Uh, this is a perfect little trail companion, lightweight, nice and easy to carry around, uh, light recoil, reasonably cheap to shoot. Uh, so it's nice to see that they're offering some uh, of those weirder loadings uh, in a little bit higher performance package, which is great. Uh, this was a viewer requested video. We had a guy on Facebook was like, hey, you guys uh, play around with this. So I uh, <laughs> sent him a message back and said, hey, we're going to do a video on it. So we try to accommodate requests from you guys. So if there's something you want to see, let me know. We'll make a video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.